Hi, it's uh, Father Eric here. After you saw in uh, the little introduction there, the two girls that uh, lit the Advent candle, uh, the Advent wreath, here we have also an Advent wreath for the second Sunday uh, of Advent. So I thought I'd just offer a few words to, to help uh, everybody in the school take advantage of this uh, really grace-filled time in preparation for uh, Christmas, right? So uh, we are in the second Sunday of Advent. So the dominant person in this Sunday is St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist. So St. John the Baptist, he's a figure, he's a kind of um, uh, bridge figure between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's kind of in between the two. And of course, his whole purpose is to serve as a preparation for the coming of the Lord. He was sanctified from the very womb. When he was in his mother's womb, he kind of was like sanctified by the Holy Spirit so that he would be a good um, announcer of the coming of Jesus, right? And that's, that's really what his whole life was dedicated to. And that's why we see he goes off into the desert and he lives a very very austere life and uh, you'll see in the gospel on Sunday how we have this kind of austere almost emaciated figure he just lives off of uh, you know grasshoppers and uh, and wild honey right and uh, he is announcing the coming of a very very big moment right and uh, he really had to be uh, that solid bridge so that people could easily be led to Jesus you know when you have a bridge you want the bridge to be solid so that you can go over the bridge and I remember hearing about this in Montreal when I was there a few years ago and uh, there was an overpass and uh, a car went over it and uh, I don't know, it hadn't been built properly and the car was somehow too heavy. It was only a normal car, but the, the car uh, just it was too much pressure and the whole bridge went down, the whole overpass went down. It was a big tragedy, right? But John the Baptist does not break down, right? As Isaiah says, he, there is a voice of one crying in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. See, that's what, that's what John the Baptist was. He was a voice of one crying in the desert. And uh, he, he's that voice, he's dressed very austere, uh, austerely, and um, he says, one, there's one who's coming after me. Right? And, and he is totally focused on his, on his mission. And he's full of prayer, but it's also a very joyous, joyous preparation. And I hope that now that you are also full of joy, and perhaps as you prepare for Christmas, perhaps that's one thing we can do, all of us. I'm gonna to try to do it too. Uh, the kids can do this. You and your family can do it too. Take the responsibility to set a tone of joy at home. Uh, set a tone of optimistic joy. Now I know there are lots of uh, restrictions now with the uh, with the COVID pandemic and I know it's difficult maybe you, you probably can't have all the family over that you would like to have so maybe you're gonna have to be alone at home a little bit uh, but that's why all the more reason to help out in the home do the dishes without being asked uh, <laughs> you know keep the place nice and clean and cozy right and uh, that way this time of Advent will be a very, very positive time. And that's what St. John the Baptist did. Now remember, Jesus said that John was the greatest of the prophets, right? Even though he didn't do miracles, he simply lived an austere life, a life of service, and uh, he helped uh, people to pray, and uh, everybody was impressed by his spirit of penance, his integrity, his uh, authenticity, right? And the power of his words, right? And he convinced everybody to 
to prepare themselves for the coming of our Lord through penance, through penance. And uh, if he convinced everybody, it was because of the rectitude of his life, his good example. I would say, though he is presented as, maybe sometimes he's presented as harsh and austere, well, he was perhaps with himself, but with others, he was, he was very amenable, he was cheerful, and uh, he, he was very excited about the coming of Jesus, right? Because this is a time of waiting, it's a time of expectation, and it's a time of hoping. All that is all the more reason to show your joy. And so right now, if you go outside, you'll see the lights in the streets, you'll see the shop windows all ready, hoping that people will come and buy their stuff. I live uh, very close to Bloor Street there, and uh, the, the city installs all these these trees with lights along the sidewalks uh, and people try to shop for really cool things, right? And they look into the, the shop windows and a lot of the stuff is pretty expensive, right? And uh, of course, the world is filled with great things and, uh, but ultimately, nothing material like that truly satisfies us. No real pleasures. They don't really satisfy us. The only thing that really, really satisfies us is to be in the state of grace, to be in good graces with God. In other words, that, that our Lord Himself uh, is happy with us. And you know, for many people, the holiday season is a bit sad. They feel a bit lonely sometimes because they, they kind of expect so much of it, right? Uh, and now, maybe all the more in this time of uh, restrictions, right? Where you have to stay quiet at home. So all the more this beautiful responsibility and this task to really be uh, joyful. So that we can focus on the essential. Not those, not all those material things that we often hear about. Although it's good, obviously, to give presents and stuff. I mean, that's part of the the season, I, you know, I mean, that's a good thing too, right? But um, he is coming and we remember that we are not alone. Jesus is with us. He wants to take his place in our soul in grace. So I invite you during this time of preparation in so far as you can do it, to go and visit Jesus in the tabernacle. Some of you can do that at Hawthorne. We have a tabernacle there. We have a painting there with the Holy Family. But especially we have Jesus in the tabernacle. And we can think of our Blessed Mother who is now pregnant and she is waiting for the coming of Jesus. She can feel Jesus growing inside her and she feels all the more excited. Right? Well, Mary was like the first tabernacle she had the living Jesus in her womb. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, we say. Well, we have our tabernacles. It's like a continuation of Mary. Mary was the first tabernacle, and we have our tabernacle in our churches. You can visit the tabernacle in Hawthorne, but maybe in your church. If it's closed, if it's locked, you can do it from the street. You can visit our Lord knowing that He is right there. So. The most important thing is that we all live in a state of grace. That's the most important thing, to live in a state of grace. That means what? It means that we're in a state where our Lord Jesus is happy with us. Where it is, you could say, good graces. We have nothing to fear from Him. We are sons and daughters of God. God is our Father. Jesus is our friend. And Mary, our Blessed Mother. She's our mother. I invite you, really, let's try to make this the best Advent ever, where you will be cheerful, good-humored, serene, filled with hope, and often uh, visiting our blessed Lord in the tabernacle. God bless you. May you have a very holy day.